uh, why am I telling you that story? Venture capital in 1996, 97, 98, 99 was nothing like it is today. Nothing like it is today. It was a different world. You still had to get traction. I got my Alta Vista deal. That's what got me the investment. But you could go straight to an A round with your initial traction. And I raised $130 million in two years through about five rounds. Microsoft took 20% of the company. And um, VeriSign, that sells the dot-coms, took 10% of the company. And we, we had a worldwide sales system through Microsoft Browser and VeriSign. And it, it took three years. We went to 350 people uh, by 99. Then the bubble burst. Guess what? We didn't do an IPO because the bubble burst. And we went down to 80 people in the next 12 months, but raised $70 million to do it and got profitable by 2002. Um, so venture capital came from Sand Hill Road only, from people like Draper Fisher Jurvetson uh, and all the big names, and that was the game. Well, after the bubble burst, they disappeared. They completely disappeared. If you ask Tim about the history of, uh, of Draper University, um, I should turn this off, but that's not easy to do while talking. Um, he will tell you that the unraveling of Draper Fisher probably started around 2000. Um, if he traced it back, he could probably, could, because it was a trauma traumatic impact, the bubble bursting. And the people who invest in venture funds didn't want to take risk anymore. Okay, I'm going to turn this off now. This is my 11-year-old son who's uh, on school vacation. And uh, let, me, let me turn this off. There we go. I'm not, I'm not bringing him into the room. He's not well behaved. So, um, so, so the, it was called the nuclear winter. Uh, literally from 2000 to about 2005, there was no VC investment in the valley. That's the second phase. It was, just was nobody was writing checks for almost anything. The, of course, there are, there are exceptions, but mostly they weren't. 2005 comes around, and um, that's when um, I created Archimedes Labs, and me and Mike were two partners in Archimedes Labs, Mike Arrington. And uh, out of that, we did TechCrunch ed and Edgeo. And we rented a house in Menlo Park that had an acre, and we started doing TechCrunch parties. The first one had 40 people at it. At it. Chad Hurley was one of the 40 people who invented YouTube. Um, the founder of Pandora was one of the 40 people. It was just the beginning of Web 2.0, and Chad Hurley was standing on the sofa doing a show and tell of YouTube. And no one would invest in them. There was no one to invest. What happened is Angel started to come to those meetings. Uh, Jeff Clavier, who now runs Softtake VC, was then just an individual. He was there. And uh, Software Tech VC today is in its fourth fund, I think. It's 130 million or something now. Then it was just Jeff with his own money. And um, angels started investing in Web 2.0 startups. And some angels, by about 2008, raised funds. Uh, uh, th that's when um, 500 startups and uh, YC were formed around 2008. And what we today call microfunds started to form. Softtech VC was one of the first, but there was, there's now 400 microfunds in Silicon Valley, 400. Uh, what is a microfund? A fund with less than $100 million under management. Uh, so it's not that micro. Some of them are very small, but some of them are, are getting bigger now. Mike Maples at Flood, Floodgate is one of them. Uh, Hunter Walk at Homebrew. Aileen Lee at Cowboy Ventures. You know, there's a lot of, these are microfunds. And they do seed entry late seed normally, but seed entry. Um, some of them have graduated to only do A rounds. Soft Tech VC mostly does A rounds now, so they've kind of grown up. But they filled the vacuum left by the old VCs. That coincided with something called Lean Startup. So you've probably all learned about Lean Startup. Well, Lean Startup is, it was originally a development methodology, how to iterate fast on a code base. 
began to be interpreted as cheap startup. That is to say, no one gets paid and uh, you bootstrap. And the reason that happened is because there was no money. And, 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 and so these microphones and YC and 500 started to fill the vacuum and create uh, what is today's VC world. Now, what characterizes today's VC world is the opposite of what I described to you in the first half. In the first half, I described long-term, near-future ideas. But the post-2008 VC landscape is asking for short-term, three-month demo day fixes. So you guys are all incented to act fast and think short-term. You're not incented to do what I did, which is paint a big picture, do it, and raise a lot of money to make it possible. You, you will be drip fed, you know, 100K, 200K. If you're really lucky, 500K or a million dollars. You might do three to five rounds of financing before you get to an A round, by which time you've given up, what, maybe, maybe half your company, maybe more, maybe a bit less, but a, a lot. You'll have given up a lot. And almost nobody is going to give you the $5 million from the initial deal that I was able to do with real names. Almost nobody will do that. So that's, that's the background. How do you operate in such an environment? Well, rule number one, you really don't want to be the guy proving that you've got traction. If you are the guy or girl proving that you've got traction, you're in a conversation about raising a small amount of money because these investors want you to have traction in order to allow you them to give you certainly under a million dollars. So the traction conversation is a trap to be avoided. It's like in the World Cup, you know, when the game has just kicked off and England scores against Colombia and it's 1-0. You say Oh, it's obvious, I know the result. I know who's gonna win. Well, no, you don't. You don't know, know who's gonna win. Traction is almost irrelevant to future outcome. Almost irrelevant. But there's such little long-term thinking happening in the Valley today that traction is the currency you have to trade on to even get attention. That is a broken ecosystem from the point of view of the future and innovation. It's not a good thing. Um, it's, a, it, it's basically a short-term hurdle-based approach to investing. 